Hello. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, we're doing some quick shuffling. I got a presentation coming up okay. and the, the demo was crashing, so we're uh, just shipping some stuff around. <laughs> Fun well, time. We could interview like your Bob, if you'd like. <laughs> sure, yeah, go for it. I'll play my best Bob now. So yeah, I'm uh, doing a presentation on a Hyper-V with a compellent. Uh, <laughs> We were just talking we're, about Hyper-V, actually. Yeah, we were talking about not Hyper-V. Right? <laughs> well, right. Well, he kept trying to get the Hyper-V conversation no, I just in there. To know if he, I just well, there to you know go. I'm your Hyper-V guy. Okay. So talk about the, that a little bit. Sure. So we started with uh, uh, deploying Hyper-V back in 2008. When Windows 2008 released, uh, Hyper-V was a release candidate in the product. And we were actually part of the technology adoption program with Microsoft <laughs> at the time. And we went live in production on the release candidate code. Okay. Okay. So for the past three years, we've been a uh, deploying Hyper-V like crazy. We're actually, I would say, 99% virtualized on Hyper-V clusters on compelling storage. 99% virtualized? Wow. And that's solely because there's a couple machines that we haven't convinced the people to, uh, the, the machines that were deployed two or three years ago that yeah. The, uh, the, they're out of warranty, but they just don't want to upgrade yet. Right, right. <laughs> so those are the only ones that are left. probably run some DOS applications, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, But I think by the end of next year, we'll be 100% okay. Hyper-V. Okay. Did I hear that Indiana University was uh, Compellent's first customer? No, we, uh, we're not uh, first. We were one of the first to be using Hyper-V. Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, so to clarify, I'm actually with a, a department at, at IU. I'm with the Auxiliary Information Technology Group. So. Uh, Central IT runs a lot of different stuff. They run okay. uh, VMware, ESX, they run on Hitachi, they run on a lot of different stuff. But uh -huh. we, uh, we, we jumped in with about 40 to 50 terabytes of uh, compellent storage and uh, on Dell M16 and M600 blades. So it's a, it's a Dell stack, it's a Dell compellent stack, now it's a Dell stack. Right. And uh, so it's just a Dell Microsoft stack throughout. Okay. And uh, we've... Uh, had a wild, a wild time of it, and <laughs> I think uh, I guess as with beta code in general, uh, things can can go wrong at times. But uh, we've we've come across uh, the whole roller coaster of it. I think more weathered and seasoned, and and have a very deep understanding of what can go wrong and how to fix it. And and now things are stable, and we're happy. That's the reason why they call it beta. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what are the applications that you're supporting on that? So we're running uh, SQL, Oracle, IIS, FilePrint. Um, in fact, Oracle was always a little fun, right? Because uh, Oracle doesn't support uh, your uh, workloads running in a virtual machine. But uh, we would not even Solaris containers. Yeah. So we we, we uh, yeah we didn't want to go down that route, of okay. course. So, so we uh, <laughs> would would go to a, a reseller and say we want to deploy this on Hyper-V, and they would say, well, that's not supported. And yeah. so we would. Yeah either deployed on a physical box and then P2V it once they left, or sometimes we would just put it on a VM and not say anything and see if they would say anything. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, now, for the most part, the industry now will say, uh, if you can replicate it on a physical box, we'll support it. If it's performance related, you've got to go replicate it on a physical box. But um, for the most part, that's that's really the only rough area, and sometimes you have to sign a waiver or whatever. But we've, yeah, we're running Probably 10 different Oracle workloads on Hyper-V and 30 SQL workloads on Hyper-V and yeah. Now, why specifically did you decide to do yeah. that? So uh, we were excited uh, to be a part of the, the TAP program, the Technology Adoption Program, yep. where you basically have access to the the, pro, the program managers, the PMs, uh, to influence the product. So this was a very young program. We could get in at the ground floor and actually work with the team. Uh, be one of the first people to learn it and actually directly influence it. I was very excited to be able to say, if there's a problem with the product, I can send an IEM to somebody and say, have you seen this, uh, et cetera. Granted, there wasn't, I think in VMware at the time, there was a community of people you could go, of customers, but to actually go and work with the product group directly was it was a very exciting thing. So. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. And, and how many users do you have that you're supporting? So uh, my group supports about uh, 1,200 desktops and about 250 servers. 1,200 desktops. So yeah. So we actually also maintain the the images for the uh, the desktop users. So we're running the System Center stack of uh, Config Man, Virtual Machine Manager, AppV. Uh, so we support all of the servers that support all of those users as as well. So the Windows Update Server, Config Manager Server, etc. And and the file and print resources. So we've got about 12 terabytes and uh, on Compellent. Uh, that 
that those users write their videos, files, music, whatever, whatever they put on there. That's that's all yeah. living in that 12 or that 50 terabyte. You got them all under compliance there in terms of content management and uh, yeah, digital so rights management, things like that. So that's one of the things that we have not gotten. We're sort of a fly by the seat of our pants group, so we I, don't. I'm getting that. <laughs> and with the beta code and everything, we just sort of throw stuff in there yeah. and throw stuff at the wall. See You're what a sticks. rule breaker, yeah. aren't you? Right. So yeah, yeah we have not done much around. Uh, so what well, we do uh, work with PCI DSS. So okay. that's the one. That in fact, that's probably been our biggest challenge over the past two two years. Once once the credit card industry started putting out PCI DSS and PCI DSS two, going through and for the acronym unfriendly people, can you uh, yeah, that's the give me payment some... card industry data security standard. And uh, so basically, if you yeah. run any system that takes credit cards, you're going through just with, like with HIPAA or SOX or whatever. You go through this an enormous amount of compliance to chip. So, so we had to change the way we do things. Okay. We couldn't quite r run as wild once we got into the PCI DSS round. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. I know that you have a presentation to yeah. go run yeah. off to. Right. We so couldn't get as much time as we wanted with you, fine. but, uh, but thank so, you. Yeah, for those interested, there's actually, we recorded a version of this presentation at TechEd. Okay. And so if you wanted to good. check it out, there's a oh, lot good. of Hyper-V PowerShell scripting involved, and we're showing how to run a data center with PowerShell scripts. Perfect. So. Great. Yep. Thank you for thank joining. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. Take care. Take care.